Hey everybody, so we're getting a large amount of messages and I think it's just because we're in the first quarter of the year about people having uh, stagnancy or their businesses are not growing the way that they would like them to. Uh, I'm just gonna make a one blanketed video and hopefully everyone gets the answers they're looking for. The first thing that we need to understand is that your business is not necessarily the most important thing. The most important thing is you and how you represent that business. People are not necessarily buying the business, they're buying the brand. Just because you go and you say, okay, well I have this material to sell and I'm gonna put it up and sell it, that's not gonna, it's not enough. There's, there has to be a story behind it because what people are essentially buying is the storyline. What I would consider a critical mistake that people are making is they're combining church and state. What does that mean? That means that people are essentially taking their spiritual beliefs or their religious beliefs or their philosophies and combining them with their business. Now, I know that that might make sense to people, especially if you're in the direction of wanting to help people and at the same time run a business. But unfortunately, the world that we live in, the business world or the corporate world, doesn't work that way. Uh, yes, you can have success combining church and state, but it's not going to be the growth and when people say to me, I, I have stunted growth right now, or my business is not growing the way I want it to, usually when I look at those businesses, there's a few key things that are going wrong. And it's across the board. So I've been able to make these assessments and come up with a, an, an idea of why this happens. So number one, what is the storyline? Most people are combining their personal narrative with their business narrative. So let's just say that I'm a Reiki healer or I'm an energy healer, right? And now I'm combining that into the business of my crystals. I'm pushing away essentially all of the clientele or the, 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 the modern day consumer, if you will, with my narrative. So while most people think, okay, I need to incorporate that into my narrative because that's how I'm selling my material, it's actually hurting you. It's actually going the other way. People don't need you to educate them and sell them something at the same time. People need to feel comfortable with you. They need to trust you and they need to think that you are level-headed. So when you start putting uh, crystal balls and rainbows and unicorns and fairies and all of these things, witches and, and all of this stuff into your narrative, you start pushing away the average consumer and you start drawing closer people who are more on the same page as your narrative. So what happens is, is that there's, let's just say that there's only, let's just say you're Wiccan, right? Because we have tons of Wiccan clients and this is a kind of a standard thing. If you're Wiccan, and your business is revolved around the idea that you're Wiccan, then most of the people who are going to be interested in doing business with you are Wiccan. And the rest of the communities who are not Wiccan are going to be opposed to doing business with you. Now, if you only want to do business with other people who are into Wicca, then great, you're doing exactly what you need to do. But if your major concern is growing your business, and why am I not growing my business in a, in a larger scale, it's because you're only catering to the people in your genre. You're not catering to the masses. You're only catering to that particular person who agrees with your narrative. So the more of the narrative that you remove, the more you're going to be able to incorporate that universal clientele. Now, also, it's very important, and if we're going to talk about the crystal business now, there is so much business that's happening right now in this industry. And there's so many people trying to get into the business and it's becoming oversaturated with new people trying to get into the business. And for us personally, you know, we're very selective about the clients that we take on and the clients that we deal with, especially now that there's so many thousands of people who want to get in the door and we can only cater to X amount of people. And so we have been very selective in choosing new clients. That doesn't mean that as a new client, you can't get in the door. That means that a new client is going to walk in here and then we are going to have an experience with a new client and then we are going to decide on our end, do we want to continue a relationship with this person? Does this make sense to add this person into our list? of clientele uh, because we don't have the room to just add client after client. Uh, the reason being is because our company offers something that I consider to be very unique and it's why my business continues to grow. Number one, what we're offering is high-end ethical sourcing fair trade material, which is very important in this industry. A lot of people who are getting into this industry and who are looking for the cheapest prices are not doing well.
because most of the industry and the people who are industry now know that cheap pricing comes with unethical things, uh, not fair trade, and bad energy in their material. And whether you're into the energy or not, doesn't matter. You still feel that in your product. And so people are looking for a clean material. They're looking for a very good material. And one of the reasons why people are not growing is because they're incorporating that poor quality, that poor energy, that cheap material that has bad juju associated with it into their business. And that's just bringing that negative vibe into your company. And while it's easy for me to say that, I mean, it's not because the proof is in the pudding. Any client that I have that only does thing, things clean and the right way only grows. That's all I've ever seen. I've only seen growth from a person who does things the right way. People who don't know that they're doing things the right or wrong way are in typically a confusing situation. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The world that we live in right now is very different than the world we lived in 10 years ago. People want fair trade. People want things done ethically. Make sure that that's part of your narrative and that it really is, that it's not just something you're throwing in there and saying. You have to make sure because people will feel the energy from your material. That's, for me, not an opinion. With that being said, let me just kind of run this down and just generalize this for everybody. Number one, universal narratives work the best. If you're incorporating your modality, your belief system into your business, then you're going to be pushing out a lot of clientele. I'm not saying it's wrong to do that. I'm just saying that if your concern is growing your business, then you need to decide how important marrying church and state really is to you. Um, the less you have your narrative in it, and it's just a clean, 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 straightforward, universal business, easier to grow, way easier. Number two, make sure the product that you have your hands on and that you're offering to people is clean before it is competitive in pricing. People now know that the cheap, pr the cheap priced material has something wrong with it. Comparing prices, oh, on Etsy, I saw it for this price. On eBay or Amazon, I see it for this price. Oh, on this website, forget that. That's not even part of the, that shouldn't even be part of the narrative anymore. Now, what people want is to buy from people who they believe in, who they trust, and who, who they believe to be reliable and honest. So spend your time being reliable and honest and consistent and not so much trying to be competitive. Being competitive is important, but being competitive in the group of right people is important. Whole Foods is not trying to be competitive with Stop and Shop. And that's because Whole Foods is offering a different kind of brand, a different kind of quality than Stop and Shop, and people know that. What I'm talking about is catering to a particular clientele and catering to people that want a higher quality and a better quality. And the only way you get those people is by offering that service. Thank you, everybody. I hope that this video was helpful. Um, I plan to do more speaking on this topic. If you have any questions or you want me to answer questions, please DM us on Instagram. Make sure you're following our Instagram page. Uh, there's tons of stuff going up there all the times. Thank you.